This video is going to be all about overcoming those Amazon FBA fears, discomforts, and other things that make us hesitant to start this business and make changes. And this one is going to hurt. What's going on everybody? It's Manny and I'm back with another video. I was inspired to make this video because I see a growing trend online where people are asking a lot of questions pertaining to how to get started and what if I get suspended and what about this and how do I learn a new tool? I don't learn easy. Is this the right business for me? And some of these threads have brought back a lot of memories to when I got started. I've been selling on Amazon for about five years now, and the prevailing message of this video is that there is always going to be something around the corner to either fear in your Amazon business or just business in general. There's always going to be something that's going to make you uncomfortable, whether it's change, if you don't adapt to change well. And because of the nature of e-commerce, change is always necessary. But I figured I would do something that is not only fun, but is also charitable and would put me in the correct, uncomfortable mindset. And this right here, this ought to do it. Something you may not know about me is I've never met a food challenge that I haven't liked. And I wanted to create a video that uh, would put me in a very uncomfortable uh, sort of mindset to talk about the things that make us uncomfortable. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the Choco Challenge. Uh, I, it is a challenge that is made by the guys over at Fuego Box. And uh, basically it's a really spicy chocolate bar. Uh, it's considered the spiciest mini chocolate bar in the entire world. If you've heard of the Carolina Reaper, uh, this actually has the, uh, the Black Reaper. Uh, the same guy that made the Carolina Reaper uh, created uh, something spicier because apparently uh, that wasn't uh, killing enough people or something. I, I don't know what the issue was. But, uh, yeah. Well, first of all, as I open this, I'm putting on gloves because I am going to be that idiot that's going to put his hands right in his eyes. Basically, uh, I'm going to see if I can get through this video after having having eaten this thing right here. It's about 2 million Scoville units. Uh, a jalapeno is only about 5,000 Scoville units. So, I mean, it, this is this is going to be painful. Uh, so excuse any sort of tearing or crying or rocking back and forth in the corner as I make this. Uh, it's all in the interest of entertainment. Uh, I don't know if I'm more worried about this uh, being such a large piece of chocolate that I have to eat or if I'm more worried about the pieces of salt on the back uh, because those pieces of salt are apparently ghost pepper salt so well here we go uh, I do have some milk on standby if I need it but uh, hopefully uh, we can just get through this video and here we go Bon appetit. Oh yeah. That heat is instant. This was a mistake. That was not smart. That uh, that hurts real bad. Oh, it hurts, it hurts. And by hurts real bad, I mean, that's not hot at all. I wish I had another one. <coughs> yeah. That just keeps getting hotter. It's going to be tough to talk through this, so let's get started. Uh, hiccups. Yeah, that's how you know. Whew. All right. Uh, Amazon FBA. 
Let's talk about this for a second because it's never going to get easier to get into this business. One of the most important things that you can remember is that there's always... Ah, f Sorry about that, guys. I just... Woo! Uh, this is crazy. I am crying. I'm sweating. I had to crack into the milk. Uh, this is the perfect way to feel when I reflect on how I started in my Amazon FBA business. I can't even talk. What's wrong with me? Let's talk about the things that make us uncomfortable, okay? I've been selling for about five years, and when I first started selling, um, I was going through a lot of personal stuff, and I needed to uh, break away from the restaurant business because I needed more time freedom. And I thought that compared to what I was doing, it was going to be super easy. And guess what? I was very, very wrong. Wow. It just keeps getting hotter. Like, it's in the back of my throat. I feel like I swallowed a porcupine with a with a uh, firecracker in its butt. Oh, the pain. So when I first started selling on Amazon, before I actually started selling, I figured out that the first pain point, the first thing that made me really kind of afraid of what I was diving into, and the one thing that made me really uncomfortable was the learning curve, how much there was that I had to learn and how much there was that was going to change just a matter of weeks after I learned it. I learned almost immediately that it's not my platform and I don't make the rules. So the first fear that I had to get over was the fact that in one snap, everything could be taken away if I don't do it right. And considering that I was gonna go full time and depend on this and other platforms to feed my family and make my mortgage payment, that was absolutely terrifying. So once I got over that, then the next thing I had to do was learn and I had to learn an awful lot. Wow, this is, it's not going away. <coughs> and learning in and of itself is something that makes a lot of you very uncomfortable. Something that makes a lot of you not want to do this business. There's always going to be something that you have to learn. There is always going to be something that changes completely or a process that goes away that Amazon no longer allows. So once you get over that, then it really is about diving in and getting the knowledge. I also see some of you out there that are expressing fear of diving into Amazon FBA. You do Merchant Fulfill and you don't wanna do FBA because of the fees. I wanna give everybody a reminder that Amazon has recently completely done away with long-term storage fees from the six month to 11 month uh, time frame. So you can now send in your merchandise and you will not receive a long-term storage fee until it's been in the warehouse for a year. So don't be afraid of long-term storage fees because in my mind, if you're afraid of long-term storage fees, you're already expecting your inventory not to sell. That sort of personal attitude and that mentality will defeat you in this business. So look for inventory that you expect to sell relatively quickly, either right away or within a few months. And if long-term storage fees are an issue, you probably need to change the way that you're sourcing. But that doesn't mean that you should be afraid of fees. If you come across a long tail book and you see that it's worth about $80, I'll pay a couple long-term storage fees. Why would I worry about that? If I know that it's going to sell, if it's the right subject matter, if it has enough of a sales history and uh, the floor on that price is good enough, stop being afraid. Do what you have to do. The same thing goes with a book that you know is going to sell, but maybe long tail, and you decide you want to merchant fulfill it instead of going FBA. I see this all the time and there's examples in the Facebook groups constantly where people decide to merchant fulfill it where there are five or six other offers instead of FBAing it when there are zero FBA offers. I think that's a really big mistake. Almost as big a mistake as me eating this crazy thing, but I'm going to tell you something. I think it's still a mistake because you're going to where the competition already is when you could have had FBA all to yourself. And you're not doing it because you're afraid of this hypothetical fee that might happen a year from now. Another source of discomfort and fear is trying to use new tools. Some of you express a real serious fear about using a repricer, uh, using a different type of sourcing app, 
Uh, some of you are afraid to let go of Amazon as far as your main listing app and you want to maybe learn something else like Acceler List or Turbo Lister, but you're really afraid to learn a new program and mess things up. The root cause of this whole thing is a fear of change and a fear of growing. We all know what growing pains are. Not the amazing show from the late 80s, but actual pain from taking on new challenges, learning, getting better, taking on more responsibility, and learning new programs and things that are going to make your workflow a lot easier. All right, I think we've peaked and it's starting to go down. I don't want to even think about how I would feel if it wasn't for the milk. And that's kind of like what I want to get into. Once you do jump in and you learn how to do something new like Amazon FBA, it's actually much easier to continue to develop and grow once you take the plunge. Once you have taken your business into your own hands and started using newer tools, more advanced tools that make your life easier, that make you more efficient and make you better at this, then it's easier to continue to grow and learn new things and move on. But you have to take the plunge. You have to decide to do it, and no one but you is gonna suffer if you decide to let fear hold you back. So focus on the life that you want, because quite honestly, nothing is gonna help you overcome the fear of creating an Amazon FBA business for yourself more than having the desire of the life that you could have if you had the ability to do whatever it is you wanted. Those of you that have been doing this for a while and you're having some trouble in your business, whether they be some bottlenecks in the way that your uh, workflow is panning out, uh, you need to focus on what the problems are in your business and come up with ways to overcome them. Uh, advanced tools such as listers, repricers, sourcing apps, those are the easiest ways to make yourself more effective as a seller and a business owner. But if you're afraid of learning new things, if you're afraid of making mistakes, that fear is keeping you from becoming a better Amazon seller. So do a deep dive into your business and look at what processes are holding you back and taking the most time. If your biggest problem is getting things listed and shipped, and you're not looking into using a listing software of some kind to speed you up, then you're always gonna have that problem and it's never going to go away. So stop procrastinating and get in there and solve your own problems because no one else is going to. Ultimately, you need to understand that with online selling comes risk. No matter what you're selling or what you're doing, there is always going to be risk. But if you go and you do your research and you inform yourself and find out the things that you need to find out, you will discover that you can actually curb that fear of risk via knowledge. But here's the question of the day. What are the aspects of selling online that have made you uncomfortable or possibly fearful for your business? What are the things that you have done to overcome these fears or to overcome the bottlenecks in your business? Go ahead and put in your comments below because we've all started somewhere. Well, that's all for today's video, folks. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see me make more videos like this one, please remember to share, like, and subscribe to support the channel. If you haven't liked this video yet, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and tap on that book bag right there. And while you're in there, hit those bell notifications so that you don't ever miss new videos when they drop. Until next time, let's go make some money.